All right, we're Calculus Unit 3, Day 24 Notes, Part 2. Um, we're going to consider this function g of x with two parts, piecewise function, square root of x plus 1 from 0 to 3, and then 5 minus x from 3 to 5, and then answer the following question. So is g of x continuous at x equals 3? Well, let's go back to what we just did on previous notes. So in order for a function to be differentiable at a value of x, then two things must be true. It must be continuous at x equals a, and then the limit of the derivative from the left must equal the limit of the derivative from the right. And going way back to the first page, what does it mean to be continuous? The function has to be defined at that point. Uh, must have a limit, so the limit from the left must be equal to the limit from the right. And then that value of the limit must be equal to the value of the function. Therefore, it's continuous. So let's continue on our... And that was g of x continuous at x equals 3. So I'm going to rewrite the top part of the piecewise function um, using rational exponents. So first of all, we have to say, is it defined? Um, and I'm looking at, obviously, at x equals 3. And that's going to be the, the uh, top part of the piecewise function. So uh, g of x is defined. g of 3 is defined. And let's just reword that how I started. g of x is defined at x equals 3, and therefore g of 3 equals, and since it's less than or equal to it, includes it right there, we're going to use the top one, which would be the square root of 3 plus 1, which is square root of 4, which is 2. Next thing I need to look at is the limit from the left, which is what I just did. So it's going to be the square root of 3 plus 1. That's the top one. Okay, we said that was 2. And then I'm going to look at the limit of g of x from the right. And that's going to be 5 minus 3, and that's also 2. So the, the limit exists. It is equal to 2. The function at x equals 3 is defined, and that equals 2. And as I said, functions defined at 3, it equals 2. The limit as x approaches 3 is equal to 2. Therefore, g of x is continuous at x equals 3. Okay? Now we have to say whether or not it's differentiable, and that's what we just said. Hey, to be differentiable... I have to, um, oh, let's come back here, to be differentiable, it must be continuous, which we just showed, and now the limit of the derivative from the left equals the limit of the derivative from the right. So let's do that. Okay, and we, as we stated, g of x is continuous. Now I want to take the derivative of both parts. So the first part will be 1 half x plus 1, the negative 1 half power, and the chain rule then says take the derivative of what's inside. That's uh, just times 1, so that won't change anything. And this was where okay, x is between 0 and 3. And the second one, the derivative of 5 minus x is just going to be negative 1. And that's going to be between 3 and 5. And in this case, we're not really worried. It's already continuous, so we weren't worried about which one it's equal to. So we're just going to uh, look at the limit as x approaches 3 from the left. Let's let's first write, rewrite these derivatives, sorry. So now that I've rewritten them, we're going to say uh, the limit of the derivative as x approaches 3 from the left, that's going to be the top function. So that's 1 over 2 times the square root of 3 plus 1. 3 plus 1 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. So that's going to be equal to 1 fourth. And then we're going to compare this to, again, we're trying to see if it's differential, the limit of the derivative as x approaches 3 from the right, that's just this constant value. It doesn't really matter what um, what x is. So, But we find out these aren't equal. Therefore, the limit of the derivatives doesn't exist. Therefore, it's not differentiable. Okay, Since the limit of the derivative as x approaches 3 from the left is not equal to, and here were the two values, not equal to the limit of the derivative as x approaches 3 from the right, then the original function is not differentiable at x equals 3. Okay, so we just said it's not differentiable. You don't have to do this, but I just want to show you on the graph what it looks like. So here's here's the graph. Um, let me show you. So here's the square root of x plus 1, and I just put x is less than 3. I let it go forever. Didn't really, 3 is where I'm worried about. And then the graph 5 minus x, um, when x is greater than 3, uh, let me actually change our window a little bit. So let's put this to 
um, let's go with negative 2 to 10. That would be perfect. And let's just go negative 5 to 5 so we can get a close look here. Okay. And then obviously see it graphed fast down here. But so the derivative, the limit of the derivatives were not equal. They did not approach a common point. Okay. So that is not differentiable. And we'll talk about more about the calculators and graphing these later on. All right, let's flip to that last page and do those last um, last two examples. Okay, so for what values of k and m, we have a piecewise function here, will the function be both continuous and differentiable? So I need to kind of do exactly what we just did to be continuous. I need the limit of the function from the left to be equal to the limit of the function from the right. So we're going to go through and we're going to find that we end up getting a uh, one equation with two unknowns. I can't solve that. But then to be differentiable, I want to find the limit of the derivative from the left and set that equal to the limit of the derivative to the right. And again, I'm going to get one equation with two unknowns, set them equal to each other, or you know, system of equations solved by substitution or elimination. So let's see where we are. So again, going back to those system of equations, first thing I want to do is take the derivative. So let's just tidy this up a little bit. This function can be rewritten as k times quantity x plus 1 to the 1 half power. So now, when I look at what the derivative of this piecewise function is going to be, uh, the first one is going to be 1 half k times x plus 1 to the negative half. Okay, obviously times, times 1, um, but we don't need that there. And now the derivative of mx plus 2 times 1, I'll write that. mx plus 2 is just going to have a derivative of m. Okay, so now, if h of x is continuous, then the limit from the left equals the limit from the right. So let's look at our original function. Um, and so the limit from the left, let's, let me write these down. So what do we get here? k times 3 plus 1. Square root of 3 plus 1 is 4. That's 2. So I'm going to have 2k is equal to 3m plus 2. So as I said, one equation, two unknowns. I can't do anything with that. So let's go over to where it was differentiable. I set that up already. So now the limit from the left. So let's come in here. Every place I see an x, I'm going to put in 3. So I have from the left, it's going to be 1 half k times 3 plus 1 to the negative 1 half. We'll talk about what that means in a second. And that's equal to just m. So x equals 3, but so that doesn't give me anything. So 3 plus 1 to the half is 4 to the negative 1 half. That's 1 all over 4 to the half, which is equal to 1 all over square root of 4, which is 1 half. And then we already had this 1 half here. So 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth. So I get 1 fourth k equals m. Okay, so now I have this system of equations. And I'm going to solve by substitution. So let me slide the screen down a little bit. So here I have m equals something. So every place I see an m, I'm going to substitute in what that's equal to. And we know that's equal to 1 fourth k, or k over 4, either way. So now I have this one equation in one unknown, and I can solve for that. So 2k equals 3 fourths k plus 2. Let's get 2 by itself by subtracting uh, 3 fourths from each side. So 2k is going to be 8 fourths. So I'm going to have 8 fourths minus 3 fourths is 5 fourths k. And that's equal to 2. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by 4 fifths. That's gone. 4 fifths. So k equals 8 fifths. Okay, and then once I know what k is, k we just said was uh, 8 fifths. Every place I see a k, I'm going to substitute in 8 over 5, and that's going to be 8 over 20. And 4 goes into both of those 4 times. So m equals 2 fifths. And that now gives us, so again, k equals 8 fifths, m equals 2 fifths. That's the only time 
for this function will be both continuous and differentiable at x equals 3. So that was obviously part of the reason. All right, last problem. And then this, that's it, part 2 for day 24, that's it. All right, this is similar, so it says for what values of a and b will the function below be differentiable? Well, to be differentiable, we said we had to be continuous. So I need to ask myself, hey, where is f of x continuous? Limit from the left equals the limit from the right. Um, I'm, once again, with the a and b, I'm going to get one equation with two unknowns. Then I have to do differentiable, um, which tells me that the limit of the derivative from the left equals the limit of the derivative from the right. And we're approaching x equals 1. So same exact process. Um, once again, we're going to get a system of equations. So let me set this up, and then we'll go through it. So here's what I need to show that it's continuous. Um, so let's substitute in 1 here. So from the left, that's the top one. So we're going to get 3a times 1 squared plus 2b times 1 plus 1. And that's going to be equal to a times 1 to the 4th. And again, 1 to the 4th is 1. This is nice. Minus 4b, 1 squared, minus 3x. Let's simplify this. Okay, Oop, and I fixed. I wrote 3x, but every place C and X, I got to substitute in 1, so that's going to be 3. So now once I get to this, I'm going to bring all the A's and B's to the left and all the numbers to the right. So subtract A from each side, I get 2A. Add 4B to both sides, I get 6B. And then I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides, I get negative 4. So here's one equation with two unknowns. Now I want to check I'm going to need another equation with two unknowns so I can solve. And I know to be differentiable, then the limit of the derivative from the left equals the limit of the derivative from the right. But before I do anything, I'm going to first find the derivative of each function. So let's do that right now. And again, 3ax squared, bring the 2 down, that's going to be 6ax. 2bx, the derivative of x is just 1, so plus 2b. Derivative of 1 is 0. And again, this is still, set. x is less than 1, we know that's what we're dealing with. Here, bring the 4 down, so I get 4a, and then subtract 1, 4ax cubed. Uh, bring the 2 down, 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. Oops, it's bx to the first, and then minus 3. And again, this is when x greater than 0. We, uh, excuse me, x is greater than 1. We're really not too worried about that. So every place to see an x, let's substitute in 1. Now let's simplify this. Uh, we get 6a plus 2b equals 4a minus 8b minus 3. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to bring all the a's to the left side. So let's subtract 4a from each side. So 6a minus 4a is 2a. Again, all the variables to one side. Add 8b to both sides. So we get 10b. And let's leave all the numbers to the right. So I now have two equations, both with an a and b. So two equations, two unknown. So I can use system of equations to to solve this. All right, let's do that. So since I have a 2a and a 2a, I'm going to eliminate the a's. I'm going to use the elimination method. So I'm going to multiply this top equation by negative 1. So negative 2a minus 6b equals positive 4. And then I'm just going to add to that this equation. So 2a plus 10b equals negative 3. And now when I add, I'm going to eliminate the a's. So I get 4b equals 1, divide both sides by 4, and we get b equals 1 fourth. So again, that wasn't the question. The question said, let's go back up, up, up all the way up. Let's try that again. What values of a and b? I know b is going to be 1 fourth, but differentiable at x equals 1. So answering what the question is asking, let's substitute these values back into one of the equations. Uh, let's pick the second one, just because it's right above. 2a plus 10 times 1 fourth equals negative 3. Um, that's going to be 10 fourths, which would reduce to 5 halves. Lots of fraction work here. Let's subtract 5 halves from each side. So it's going to be negative 5 halves. Negative 3 becomes negative 6 halves. So 2a equals negative 11 halves. And now let's divide both sides by 2, which is the same as multiplying by 1 half. So a equals negative 11 fourths. And now we found out what values of a and b allow 
the piecewise function that we had to be differentiable at x equals 1. And that's a equals negative 11 fourths, b equals 1 fourth. Okay, that's it for the day 24 notes. Make sure you fill those in for next class.